This is a picture of a song, its fingerprint, its visual identity. It was generated by a tool that visualizes matching data, and it reveals something pretty cool about how a song can be structured around lyrical repetition. And by the way, this is Vince Staples' Yeah Right, and it's been stuck in my head for months. Boy, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Boy, yeah, right, yeah, right. This is Colin Morris. He's a computer programmer who loves pop music. I did like a master's degree in computational linguistics. Colin created this tool called SongSim. Each row and each column is a word in the song from beginning to end. But the interesting thing is when you see these structures that are off the diagonal. Those moments off the diagonal represent some form of repetition. I, I think my, my favorite example, and, and one of the earliest ones that I played with, was Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. One of the coolest things about this song is just how many different hooks she manages to squeeze into it. Depending on how you count, there are at least five different lyrical themes that repeat to the point where you start running out of words to describe them. Usually, verses aren't that repetitive. Here they are. The only part of the song that falls into a traditional song structure is the bridge, and it really stands out. Still though, it's highly repetitive. Bad Romance came out in 2009, and since then some of the biggest pop songs every year have only gotten more repetitive. We'll get back to this chart, but first I really want to get something out of the way. Yes, that's true, but not exactly what I wanted to say. You see, there's always been a pretty strong sentiment that if a song is structured around excessive repetition, it's uncreative, it's unchallenging, or it lacks complexity. That anti-repetition sentiment goes back a laughably long time, all the way back to November 6, 1882, when composer Ferdinand Prager made a case against repetition called On the Fallacy of the Repetition of Parts in the Classical Form. Here's what he said. All will readily admit that a first impression, however striking, is weakened when followed by an immediate repetition. Would ever a poet think of repeating half of his poem? A dramatist a whole act? A novelist a whole chapter? Such a proposition would be at once rejected as childish. Why would it be otherwise with music? Prager believed repetition was beneath music when, in fact, repetition is decidedly musical. There's this phenomenon called the speech to song illusion. Have you run across that? That's Elizabeth Margolis. She directs the Music Cognition Lab at the University of Arkansas and has written a book on musical repetition. Yeah, so this is this is this really interesting process where you can take a little bit of speech, you can take a little bit of speech, you can take a little bit of speech, repeat it a number of times, and for many people there's this very salient transformation where what initially just sounded like somebody talking to you um, now sounds like somebody singing. Psychologist Diana Deutsch discovered this illusion in 1995, ironically when she was editing the audio of her CD, Musical Illusions and Paradoxes. Margolis's Music Cognition Lab has conducted a number of studies on repetition, but there's one that really fascinates me. You see, she selected music from renowned 20th century composer Elliot Carter, whose work was atonal and explicitly non-repetitive. She presented a few versions to a class of 33 students who were unfamiliar with the work. One version was the original, no alterations. The other two versions were digitally altered, just to be repetitive without regard for the aesthetic quality of the music. Uh, It turned out that the excerpts that had been kind of adulterated to insert this literal kind of repetition were viewed uh, not only as more enjoyable and more interesting, but also is more likely to have been composed by a human artist rather than randomly generated by a computer. So repetition in music not only feels intentional to our brains, we actually just enjoy it. Let's take a look at that chart you saw earlier. 
It illustrates that our love of repetition was increasingly reflected in pop music. I was surprised by how clear the trend was. Oh yeah, Colin made that too. It turned out that you could basically take any 10-year period over the last 50 years and there would always be an increase in repetition over those 10 years. Yes, pop songs have gotten more repetitive, but repetition can be used to flip predictable song structures to make them completely unpredictable. And that's really cool. I don't know if you saw the visualization for Formation by Beyonce. Oh, yes. Okay, ladies, now let's get information. It's almost like two songs glued together. With the first half of the song, you have this very clear chorus. My daddy, Alabama. Mama, Louisiana. You mix that Negro with that Creole, make a Texas Bama. Once you get to the second half, that hook disappears and Beyonce replaces it with this catchy, hyper repetitive chant. You can't deny the power of this song. Repetition doesn't just make it memorable, it reinforces its central message. But when I listen to Yarite by Vince Staples, I'm reminded of the speech to song illusion. When Vince repeats Yarite over 20 times, my focus shifts from the meaning of the lyrics to their rhythm and musicality. Repetition grabs a hold of our brains in a way that we often can't quite control. And that might make us feel like the music is playing us rather than us playing the music. But if repetition makes songs like Formation, Lose Yourself to Dance, Beat It, and I Want to Dance with Somebody both great and memorable, it can rule the charts forever. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, of course, I've got a couple of links in the description below. The first is to thepudding.cool. That's where Colin published his um, Are Pop Songs Getting More Repetitive Interactive? It's really, really cool. And he also outlines sort of a fascinating way in which he created the interactive. The second is to his SongSim uh, website. And the third, of course, is to a Spotify playlist that I created for you called Broken Record Records.